Microscopes are uh, they're fun to use. Need to see things that otherwise you wouldn't be able to see. Uh, this is what sort of the microscopes we're usually going to use are going to look something like that. Here's an example of one. Okay. Now, this microscope is an earlier microscope. Um, the microscope started to be invented and perfected in the 16 and 1700s. Um, and then they sort of were refined and got better and better after that. Uh, and there's some objects viewed through the microscope. So we'll talk a lot about them. There's some vocabulary, most of it's related to cells. Uh, so we're not going to go over it at this moment, but we'll be getting there later on in, in our unit. Okay, now when we talk about microscopes, um, we are going to use two types of microscopes, and I'll talk about three types of microscopes. So this first one here is probably like the one you may have used before. Um, this is the one we'll use the most. And the name for this type of microscope is a compound light microscope. Now, compound, what does that mean? Yeah, it means two parts. Like a compound word might be like doghouse. It's two words put together to make one. Um, are there any hunters in this room? Bow? No. A compound bow, I believe, is a bow. I'm not a hunter, but with multiple strings. Is that right? Yeah? Is that what it is? Yeah, it's all better. Yes. Okay, thanks. Um, but compound needs several parts. And a compound microscope has two different lenses that magnify the image. So in this compound microscope that I have here, there's a lens up here in the eyepiece that magnifies the image. And there's also one down here um, in the objective lens. So the object gets magnified twice, once in each lens. So that's why it's called, called a compound light microscope. For our microscopes that we use, they can magnify an image from 40x to 400. What that means is, when you look through that microscope on low power, what you see is 40 times bigger than real life. If you are using high power in those microscopes, the image that you see is 400 times larger than, uh, than it is in real life. So that's about how much those microscopes that we're going to use magnify the image. Some other light microscopes have a greater magnification, but we're not going to use them. All right. This type of microscope is called a dissecting microscope. Okay? It's used for more than dissecting, though. And it looks a little bit different from the compound microscope. What do you notice about it? Anything special? Daniel? There's two <laughs> Yeah, there's two eyepieces. Sometimes it's called a binocular. Um, microscope because you use both eyes at once to look through it. Okay? And this, this microscope doesn't quite magnify as much. Okay? These microscopes can magnify from 10 to 40 times. Okay? So not as high magnification. But they have other benefits that we will talk about. And then the third type of microscope down here. It looks more like a computer than it does a microscope. This is an advanced electron microscope. And we don't have an electron microscope here at school. You know, you may find them at colleges and universities or medical facilities. They're big, they're very expensive, um, but they can magnify an object a huge amount, up to and over one million times. So those are the three types of microscopes that we're going to consider. And each of these microscopes sort of gives a different view of an object. And I'll show you some examples here. Let's start with the compound microscope, this one over here. So when you look through the compound microscope, um, you see sort of images look pretty flat. 
two-dimensional. Okay, this is an amoeba. We're going to look at amoeba in a future unit. It's a living single-celled organism. Same thing, this is a paramecium. We will see paramecium in another unit. And this is euglena, another single-celled organism. We will see all three of those. Here's some others, vorticella, um, radiolarins, forminiferins. These are all um, living organisms that are microscopic, that until scientists um, created microscopes, people didn't see. They didn't know that these things exist. They're so small that they're invisible to the naked eye. You needed microscopes to, to discover them. Now, when we use a dissecting microscope, things look different. This is an aphid, a small insect viewed through a dissecting microscope. What is it, how does it look different? Can you, CJ? It's like not too much more. Exactly. One of, the, one of the things about the dissecting microscope is it gives you a three-dimensional view of the object. Um, just as to take a, a little side trip here. To see in three dimensions, to see depth, you really need two eyes um, that are facing forward. Animals that have forward-facing eyes usually have good depth perception. They can see how near or how far something is. They have good three-dimensional vision. Things like cats um, or um, monkeys, lemurs, raccoons. Forward-facing eyes give you good sense of depth perception. Okay? And so when you're using the compound microscope, Obviously, you're generally using one eye, and so you don't get a good sense of depth perception. Now, did anybody, how many of you are aware of contacts? Anybody? Contacts? Okay. If you've ever, like, lost just one contact, okay, you may have noticed it's hard to see how near or how far something is. Uh, if you have played sports and you um, lose a contact, it's hard to see that ball coming towards you. Um, because having two eyes facing forward gives you good depth perception. Even like if you close one eye and you like try to grab something in front of you, it's much harder to do. In fact, 3D glasses work based on this principle. Like um, when you go to a 3D movie, you have to put on those special glasses. Those special glasses are designed so that each of your eyes sees a slightly different image on the screen, and that gives you Three dimensions. Because the way our vision works, hold a finger out in front of your, your face, just close. And not open and close your eyes, one and then the other. What does it look like your finger is doing? It looks like it's moving. Is it really moving? No. Then why does it look like it? Your point of view from each eye is kind of different. Yeah, because your, your eyes are next to each other, they don't exactly see the same exact image. They have a little different angle, and so it looks like your finger moves when you close your eyes back and forth. Now, notice how much it moves when it's close to your face. So do it again. Now, hold it far out. How much does it move? A lot less. Less. Look across the room at an object. Does it seem to move much? No. no. And so this is how your brain tells you how close something is to your face. When both eyes see a very different view of the object, that means it's close to you. If both eyes see basically the same view, it means the object's far away. So 3D movies or 3D um, pictures, like if you have a comic book or something, you look through those red and blue glasses, they basically allow each eye to see a different image, and that allows you them to trick your eyes into getting a, a sense of something as close or far away. CJ? I was staring at something in the surgery room, but it was moving. I didn't realize. Oh, really? Yeah. Is this one here? Holly? Um, also, with context, if one's folding your eye, A, it hurts, yeah. and B, it makes it hard to see. Yeah, yeah, definitely. All right, so these dissecting microscope images give you a much better um, three dimensional view of an object. They also allow you to see objects that are solid. For the compound, for this compound microscope, you'll see there's a light on the bottom that shines up through. That has to shine through your object and then into the eyepiece. So that only works with very, very thin objects. 
The dissecting microscope has a light on top that bounces off the object and into the eyepiece, allowing you to see solid objects. So you can see this aphid. This is a planaria, a flatworm that we'll see later in the year. This is a seed that's germinating, it's breaking out of its seed coat. Okay? So those dissecting microscope images give you a better three-dimensional view. Then the electron microscope, which magnifies things up to a million times. So you can see really interesting views of organisms, like a spider. This is toilet paper, what it looks like under an electron microscope. Um, Velcro. Velcro, it's kind of neat. When you look at Velcro, you know the scratchy side of your Velcro? What does that look like? What is it made out of? Oh, yeah, I don't know what it's made out of, but when you rub it gets your skin, it hurts. Yeah, and that's because it's made out of tiny little plastic hooks. How about the soft side of Velcro? Some sort of Yeah, they're like loops, little loops of thread. And so what happens when you push it together, the little hooks grab on to the um, loops and keep your thing closed. When you take it off, those, those hooks are flexible, so they bend, and you can undo it. And that's how Velcro works. This is both. See, these are the hooks, and then this is the loop part. That's a human hair. It's the foot of a fly. All these tiny little, um, tiny little hairs allow it to sort of stick to the surface. This is a fly, but these are tiny little mites, parasites, that live on the fly. They're colored in green here. There's a mite on a beetle. Okay, that's a maggot. Oh my God, it looks like <laughs> that's a fly. Indeed. Okay. Some really cool looking, uh, it's a mantis. You can see, when you zoom in on these creatures, they're really neat looking. Scary. Another bee. Mr. Yes. Were you stalking a spider last night? Yeah. It's an ant, a grasshopper, okay, a fly. So again, yeah, all of those are, in order to use the electron microscope, you need to coat the object you're looking at in a very thin layer of metal to reflect the electrons, and therefore, uh, the things you look at are generally not living. Probably <laughs> not. All right, so let's talk about this compound microscope. We need to learn how to use it, and we need to learn what the parts are. In fact, you're going to have a quiz next week on the parts of a compound microscope. So I'll show you on the actual microscope, we'll fill some things in here. All right. So to begin, there are two lenses on this microscope that magnify what you're looking at. There's the lens up here in the eyepiece. Okay, that's one. So up here. And then, there are these lenses down here. And you can sort of rotate these lenses to choose one of the three powers. These lenses down here are called the objective lenses. And we have three. We have low, medium, and high power objective lenses on these microscopes. Low is red, medium is yellow, there's a stripe on there, and blue is high power. And each one magnifies a different amount. This part here that you hold on to and you rotate through the objectives, that's called the nose piece. It holds the objectives in place and lets you rotate to select different objectives. Okay. From there, you have this part, it's a long tube. Now in this microscope, it's at an angle. On the microscope in your diagram, it's straight, but it's the same thing. It's called the body tube. And you need a certain distance between the eyepiece and the objective lens in order for it to focus well. And so the body tube helps keep them at that proper distance. Why do you know, Dr. Why are they numbered? So you can find them in the diagram and stuff? Oh. 
Now, number five, on this microscope in the diagram, it's, this is not a light. What is this? A mirror. It's a mirror. Older microscopes had a mirror there sometimes, so you have to shine a light into the mirror, and then that would bounce it up and through the stage. Our microscopes, though, are um, rechargeable. They have a little LED light in the bottom. Um, this one, the battery is dead. But uh, it has the light built in, the light source. Oh, I was connected. Yeah, that's fine. We won't ever use microscopes with a mirror, but they do. Oh. They are around. Could anyone ever? Is there a magnifying jiggers and jiggers and jiggers? It's big, big enough. Put like a person on, like me. I don't think so. All right. The part where you put. So when we use these compound microscopes. We always look at an object that's on a slide. What is a slide? You know? Like each of those little clips that like you're... Okay. Yeah, it's a little piece of glass, or sometimes plastic, that you put an object on so that you can see it. Okay. So here are some slides. These are plastic. Just a piece of plastic you put your object on, and then that goes on the microscope on this black part here, which we call a stage. And what about stage last year? Mm -hmm. In microscopes? Yes. Okay. So yeah, that's the stage. And then you have to hold the, the slide on there somehow. Now this microscope has two just sort of clips that hold it down. We have, um, the, these are, for example, in this uh, dissecting microscope, you can see these are called stage clips. Um, but our compound microscopes have something that's a little different. We have a, a different type of clip. So it's really <coughs> lever in an arm, you can see I'm holding it here, that holds the slide in place. So there's a couple, there's lots of different types of microscopes. But they all, those things do the same basic thing. Okay, the light on the bottom um, shines through the stage, but then there's this dial on the side. This dial, hey, what do you see on the bottom here? That dial? What's on the bottom? Like, what's in this plastic disc? Yeah, there's holes. And the holes are different sizes. So what do you think this adjusts when you slide this around? And Daniel? The amount of light. Yeah, the amount of light. If you have one of the big holes selected, lots of light can go through. If you have one of the small holes, a smaller amount of light can go through. That's called the diaphragm. Now, sometimes too much light's coming through, um, and it makes it difficult to see things. microscope is sort of sitting on. The arm is what you might grab to carry it around. You always want to carry a microscope with two hands. Um, and then we have two more parts. The last two are important. And on this microscope they look a little different. Uh, the diagram has a big knob and a small knob, 11 and 12. This microscope also has a big knob and a small knob, but they're sort of built into one thing. So when you turn this big part, what's happening? Bowie? No? People always think that, like you're zooming in and out, but you're not. Nate? It focuses the image and gets it clear. 
And so this big knob moves the stage up and down a lot. The smaller knob, you turn that part of it, it also moves up, but only a very small amount. The big one is called the course adjustment. The small one is called the fine adjustment. And so when you first start looking at something in the microscope, it's usually out of focus. It's usually blurry and difficult to see. And you have to focus it using those knobs in order to see it clearly. Now, when you're on low power, you can use, the course, the big knob. But when you switch to high power, look how close. When I have this blue high power objectives there, look how close it is to the stage. You don't want to use this course adjustment when you're in high power. You only want to move it a tiny bit with that fine adjustment. Would you ever make it like blue? <coughs> What's that? Would you ever make it like that? I know what you're asking. You said you can't move it like. Uh, you don't want to move it a lot because you could interfere uh, with what you're seeing. But could you do it like in the slow? No, you generally just use the fine adjustment. All right, so let's talk a little bit here about the microscope. So why is it called a compound microscope? I just told you a few minutes ago. Compound microscope. Yeah? The multiple. You're on the right track because it has multiple. See good? It has a light source and it has a no, Haley? It has an eyepiece and then a bottom. Yeah, objective lens it has two lenses that magnify the image the wow. eyepiece and the objective. One of the things that you <laughs> will be asked to do is calculate how much the image is being magnified. And so the way that you do that, let's say on your microscope, the eyepiece that you're looking through is <coughs> magnifying the image 10 times. And the objective lens is magnifying it 30 times. What's the total amount of magnification that you're seeing? What? 300, exactly. You multiply the power of the eyepiece times the power of the objective, and that will tell us the total amount of magnification. So in this case, a 10x eyepiece and a 30x objective give us 300x <coughs> total magnification. When you are carrying a microscope, sometimes I'll have you go get a microscope. Maybe, maybe they're in Mr. Arcuri's room, you're going to have to carry it somewhere. Um, you always want to be sure to carry it with two hands. One hand on the base, one hand on the arm. Oops, sorry. I'll, I'll go back. What? Yeah. Okay. Two hands. One on the arm, one on the base. Let's So when light goes through here, it goes through one lens here that makes it bigger, the image. Then it goes up and there's another lens up here that makes it also makes it bigger. So you multiply the power of both of those. All right. Want to take a guess? These are things viewed under the microscope. What do you think that is? A shoe? Anybody else? 
fabric. Piece of fabric? Big pizza. What is that? It's actually a CD. Close up of a silver layer with a CD. How about that? A broken table. Bro this, these are under the microscope, remember. Oh. Haley. Oh, oh my God, that would work. No, this is a razor. And what are these? The hairs. Hairs that have been shaved off. Oh. Ew. Ooh, large s'mores. S'more cereal? No. No. But something you may eat. No? No, but you're getting close. It's two things. It's two things. Yeah, salt and pepper. I like this game. Let's keep playing. This is an easy one. Velcro. Velcro. So you see, these are the hooks, and these are the loops, and that's being held together when you pull it apart. Those hooks are flexible, and they then allowing it to separate. Do the loops break? No, they don't break. No, it's bad. Grated cheese. No. <laughs> Toilet paper. Oh. 